<laughs> hey, Finn. I'm not doing so good. Oh, no. Yeah. I just wish I could see the treehouse one more time. Yeah, dude. Of course. Let's go there right now. That's okay. Just promise to plant me there. Hello everyone and welcome to the Void Theater. As always, I'm your host Alexander and we're back with another character study. And because he was not only the most requested character in the comments of the Adventure Time video, but also somehow managed to beat out the Lich on the channel poll, we'll be talking about everyone's favorite grassy boy, Fern. Now, Fern is what I would call a rare character. He's one of those characters that despite coming in half to the end of the show, still manages to become one of the most iconic characters in it, even beating out some of the characters that were there since the beginning. And it's easy to see why. Fern's story is one that, while common in a lot of shows, is one when done right makes any character one of the most compelling ones. And Fern definitely falls into the latter part of that idea. His story is one of trying to find identity and purpose in a place where your role is already filled. He's a bizarro to the Superman of Ooh, a homunculus with no name wandering the world. And like Finn, his life was defined by the people he interacted with as he grew. But it does leave the question of what Fern is. Is he a clone of Finn with a darker side to him? Or is he just a creation of the grass demon? Well, that's what we're here to discuss. What exactly Fern is, how over the course of the final two seasons of the show his character was defined, and most importantly, how lacking some of the certain things Finn had as his character grew over the course of the show, drastically changed him from the grass copy hero of Ooh to the fearful and terrifying Green Knight. And as always, if you end up enjoying the video, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. But without any further ado, we can begin. So let's raise the curtain, put this character on stage, and see if we can weed out his nitty gritty details. Alright, so like most of these character studies, we need to establish a base, and with Fern, we have two very important factors to consider. The first is that when he first appeared, Fern wasn't intentionally evil. He was just lost and confused. He was a baby with the memories and body of a teenager. Like Bubblegum says, he is Finn in almost every way. The problem here is the word almost. See, like I said in my last video on Adventure Time, Finn was defined by the mistakes that he made over the course of the show in regards to his relationship with the people he knew. And I stand by that. Without those experiences, Finn wouldn't be the person he is by the end of the show. But the thing is that while Fern might have those memories, he doesn't have the experiences that came with them. You can see reflections of this in the way he acts in his earliest episodes. He's not using what Finn learned over his years as a hero, he's just replicating the basics that are in his DNA. Let me put it this way. If the Finn that first meets Fern is Season 8 Finn, aka the Finn that has learned time and time again to look before he leaps and think before he acts, then Fern is a grass version of Season 1 Finn. He's all offensive all the time. In fact, in his second major episode, you can see this exact attitude. When he's fighting, there's no thought process. He's just slaughtering anything that gets in his way. Even when the monster doesn't want to fight like the grass demon who offered a riddle instead, this would have been a time where the real Finn would have at the bare minimum attempted the riddle. Fern just chops him down. And that's what leads to this identity crisis. Like I just said, having the memories of experience isn't the same as experiencing the events. And it's that lack of experience that makes him start to wonder if he's a real version of Finn. Every episode after that, with the exception of his final two, is about wondering why he fails where the real Finn would have easily succeeded. And unlike Finn who learned from his mistakes, Fern lets himself sink deeper and deeper into his own self-doubt until he decides that the only way he can make an identity for himself is to steal the original's identity. It's an idea he never let go of even when he becomes the Green Knight. Noticing that his first appearance, he says something very specific when he reveals who he actually is. I know. It's my birthday too. Fern? It's my birthday too. He doesn't give a grand speech about his return or make some villain-like declaration. He says it's his birthday. Finn's birthday. Because even now he's still obsessed with being Finn. But now instead of trying to be him, he's out to kill him to prove that he's the superior version. And right here is where I want to address a question I got on the poll for this video. Because the truth is, it's an insanely well thought out question. And it was when did Fern become Fern? And it's a question that can be answered in a lot of ways. Some would say that he was always Fern because he can never look to the real Finn. Others would possibly argue that he truly became Fern when he became the Green Knight because he finally created his own identity. But I think the truth is Fern was always Fern because he never had a Jake. No, I know that sounds weird, but let me try to explain. Like I said, in my last video, I talked a lot about how Finn was defined by his failures, and I still stand by that. But what I didn't mention is just how influential Jake is on Finn. 
See, throughout Adventure Time, Finn and Jake always had a yin yang to their relationship. Whereas Finn was always hot headed and prone to action before thinking, Jake was the opposite. He was far more passive and willing to try reason before resorting to action. And it was exactly what Finn needed. Over the course of the show, Finn was always brought back from his emotional highs by Jake reminding him that things can sometimes just happen and that you have to let them play out. And the thing is that each and every one of those experiences that Finn had were either helped by Jake or concluded with his help. Throughout the entirety of his infatuation with Bubblegum, it was Jake who was there by his side. Whether it was encouraging him when it was just puppy love, or him finally encouraging Finn to close the book and move on, Jake was always there. It's the same thing for Marceline, Flame Princess, and Martin. At every major event in Finn's life, Jake was there to tether him and make sure that he didn't sink any deeper into his own dark thoughts. He kept him from turning into his own worst self. So, what does all that have to do with Fern? Well, think about everything I just said and then go look at Fern's progression through his arc. And then remember what Bubblegum said about Fern. He's not some alternate universe creature, he's Finn. He has the same memories, the same likes and dislikes, and the same emotional insecurities. Except now instead of his brother being there to lift him out of that turmoil, he has no one so he just sinks deeper and deeper into it. Yes, Fern is an evil bizarro Finn, but more importantly, he's a Finn with no Jake. A boy with no big brother to watch over him and keep him out of the dark places his overactive mind goes to. And that's not just a personal opinion, the show itself seems to confirm this. In that episode where he kills the grass monster and those self-doubt thoughts really start to creep in, it was Jake's encouragement and his apprehension that brought him back to reality. In that same episode when he started beating on the wizard, it was Jake that was able to stop him by telling him he was going too far. And even in the series finale, it's not Finn who ends up bringing Fern back to reality, it's Jake. He drags him into the vault and reminds him of who he is. Yes, he may be a clone, but he's still a Finn. Even when it's not the real one, Jake is always there to protect his friend and brother. And even later in Together Again, it's shown that every time Finn reincarnates, Jake is always by his side. They're so connected that even through the process of reincarnation, the two will always find a way to be friends again. Because the fact is that a Finn with no Jake is like a Batman with no Robin. It can work for a little while, but eventually it's going to go off the rails. And at its core, that's what Fern's character arc is. He's a clone of a hero without his sidekick, trying to live in a world that really has no need for him. Only truly finding peace when he accepts what he is and casts off the demons inside of him, and accepts that while he isn't the original, he was still a part of what made Finn, Finn. And while that sounds depressing, it's nice to know that even if he can't help this Finn, he'll be there to help the next legendary hero. And with that, we come to the conclusion on the character study of Fern. Still would've preferred to do the Lich, but I'm a man of the people. And if I'm being honest, I was gonna have to do this anyway. But anyway, as always with the current closing, I'll leave you with some questions. How do you feel about Fern as a character coming in so late to the show? And do you enjoy his ending, or would you have preferred that he stayed alive? Leave a comment down below and let me know what you think, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like it and subscribe for more content. But until next time, I've been your host Alexander, and I hope to see you back in my theater.